call them into order at seven o'clock. That's what I already said. We are going to reorganize tonight. Um, I would like to hear him. I'd like to. I will. I will nominate um, Joyce Palmer Fortune as the chair of the select board for the fiscal twenty or the current whatever we are in. So this, yeah. As, for the as of the election yesterday. Second the nomination. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, I'll accept. Uh, accept. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right, Joyce, you're up. Okay. Uh, I would uh, like to nominate vice chair. That's supposed to be Fred. Fred. I would like to nominate Fred for vice chair. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Done. Accept. Okay. I'd like to nominate Jonathan Edwards as a as a clerk. Not that we sign anything anymore, but okay. Well, yeah, you do some things. Yeah, I'm not sure. Why. Oh, we'll let you sign some second. things. Second. Okay. Choice. Oh, uh, got okay. All. That's right, I'm the chair now. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. Yeah. Aye. Okay. Okay. Great. And I'm still pulling up my agenda. I think the first item is the minutes of the previous meeting, is it not? Yeah, May 29th. Um, I have been Thank you. I've, I can pull it up. Um, is there any uh, comments on the uh, meeting minutes we got by email? I have no comments. No, no comments. Okay, no motion, motion. motion to accept minutes of May, 9, May 29th, Second. 2019. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're okay. supposed to do this too. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's under agenda. Do we want to change anything? We it's on assignments. Oh, does that come uh, under the reorganization? Yeah. Um, the liaison assignment. That's what they were. Does anybody want to change them? I'm good with mine. No, I'm fine with mine. Um, I can stick with mine. Um, do we need to add one? Typically, the chairperson was was my liaison. Okay. Um, all right, I mean. That's what it's been in store. Yeah. That's fine. So, so you float around. Yeah. Okay. Did you want to read these out? Uh, I'll read them out loud. Uh, select board liaisons uh, for um, the fire department and the water department uh, has been Fred. Uh, for the town offices and the highway department has been Jonathan. Uh, for the police department and the schools has been me. And the town administrator liaison uh, is whoever's chair, which was John for the last year and would switch over to me for the coming year. Um, do I have any, any comments? I think it's great. No, it looks good. Okay. Fine, Is it something we need to vote on? Oh, I think it would be good. Now. Okay. Uh, okay. I take a motion then. Motion. motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Yeah. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we're down to my favorite item on the list, which is comments from the public on items not listed on the agenda. So if there's something listed on the agenda, then we'll talk about it then. But if you have some comments on things not listed on the agenda, now is your chance. Yes, sir. I don't know if the board might want to start putting the, the Mayo property and the center school on the upcoming agendas for discussion. Budget season is rapidly approaching and all else will come to a halt. That's a good idea. Uh, I could say the DeMayo property is, is being relooked again by the housing committee. So we're talking to hopefully different group of people and, and it's on our agenda for September. So we had also done something in September. Our next meeting is coming up <coughs> or sooner if we, if we yeah, need to. I would suggest we move it faster than that. If they want to step in, that'd be <coughs> Well, okay. So we can winter ahead. Brian, have we received any uh, <clears throat> announcement or lack of from the state regarding the no. from housing and community development? The mass development. The mass development piece. Technical yeah. Technical assistance. No, I haven't heard. And do we, I don't remember the deadline or the date. I have, to, I have to double check. Let's look because that may be. We'd applied for some a, a, a grant July would be, or something. Get, we would get guidance on <laughs> DeMeo and Center School actually. Um, so that maybe that might help us with the schedule. Yeah. 
No, I think those are those are both good ones. As, as well, other, we're, we're having no rants at this meeting because Jonathan wants to get out by eight twenty. But we we have talked about how those those uh, specifically this, the center school is just costing us something around ten thousand dollars a year just to have it do nothing. Um, is uh, that's and to me that's kind of the, the higher priority of the two, honestly, because it doesn't cost us that much to keep the DeMeo property as it is. But those are those are important things. So uh, I'll leave it to Brian to put them on the on upcoming agenda. Are there any other comments before we move to the next item? Okay. Um, so we have some appointments. Oh, right, pretty much on time. Uh, the NAP advisors are going to discuss a proposed marijuana cultivation establishment at 62 Christian Lane. So, uh, good evening, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, as you no, know, I'm, maybe, I'm, maybe not. I don't maybe, know. maybe. maybe. <laughs> I'm Richard Evans, and I represent uh, uh, Mustang Investors, who have uh, applied for special permit site plan approval from the site plan of ZBA for use of the. Do with the conference greenhouse. Yeah. Yeah. For those here who are not, the 62 Christian Lane is the greenhouses that are lit yeah. up purple at night. Exactly. That's right. pink and purple. I said we uh, weren't no That's right. And the uh, John Dewey is the uh, principal of a Mustang Investor. I think you met with him a, a month or so ago. He was here. And uh, Charles Smith, in the back row there, he's been here before. Uh, when, when engineer Chris Chamberlain. Oh yes, Chris Chamberlain, the civil engineer, of course. Sorry. And when, when we were before you last time, we indicated that Mustang was intended to be a landlord there and would be looking for a tenant, uh, an operator, who would actually be the licensee before the cannabis, before the cannabis, would hold a CCC license and obviously would, would uh, uh, negotiate a host agreement with, with the town. And I'm very pleased to introduce a representative of such uh, the tenant. The tenant is NAP Advisors uh, LLC out of Colorado. This is Ashley Pacillo, who is a who, who uh, is representative of uh, of NAP. And we'd like to take a few minutes and talk about the prospect of a uh, signing a community host agreement or host community agreement uh, with this board. Um, and so, Ashley, Thank I'll, you. I'll let you. Uh, Come, come here. Uh, Where would you like me? Um, you can stand right I here. I think if you're there, the camera can see you. We can see Perfect. you as long as you don't step in front of the camera. Oh, okay. Yes, thank you. Um, thank you for having me here. Thank you for listening to our presentation. Um, my name is Ashley Pachillo, and I am representing NAP Advisors, which stands for um, the North American Plant Advisor Firm. Um, our team is stemming from California as well as Colorado, although I'm a Massachusetts native myself, so I'm particularly excited to be back in my home state to talk about this. Um, a little bit about me, I've been working in cannabis compliance and operations for around six years now. I moved to uh, Colorado at the beginning of legalization in 2014. Prior to that, I was a special education teacher. I come from a long line of um, educators, actually based here in Mass. Um, sort of a strange series of events led me into cannabis and another series of events led me to the, the team I'll tell you about here. Um, in my role now, I own a, women, a certified women-owned uh, company. We specialize in compliance, like I said, throughout the United States. Um, we've worked in more than 70 regulated cannabis markets and have a very strong understanding of um, what it takes to operate and set up these facilities. Um, my company was also selected by the commission in the fall as one of seven vendors um, deemed qualified to support social equity applicants in the cannabis space within Massachusetts, hopefully illustrating our um, strong understanding of this program and the spirit of this program. Uh, to tell you a little bit about my team, the management team represents more than 35 years of regulated cannabis experience, notably in, in um, California as well as Colorado. And I don't know if you've yet met um, our CEO, Robbie, but he's the gentleman on your pages there. He is one of the first PhD cannabis horticulturists in the, in the country. Um, got into the space after his mother was diagnosed with cancer and recognizing that agriculture and cannabis needed to be sort of taken to the next level. Um, the facility there would serve as a training facility uh, but ultimately, most of the hires here would come from the local town as well as the business that's already operating on the premises. Uh, so with that, I'd love to shift into the community benefit. 
Um, again, based on my background, I have developed community plans for most of my clients throughout the, the US um, and believe that it's really important to design these in alignment with the towns where we'll actually work. And so we spent a great deal of time trying to understand this town and the needs that this town has. Um, I think the most notable benefits, of course, are property taxes, uh, job creation, job preservation for the existing folks working there now. Um, but you know, probably most relevant to this conversation would be our contributions to charitable organizations, schools, as well as the human uh, the host agreement fee and the community impact fee. Um, in trying to determine what a reasonable community impact fee was, of course, we started looking at the rules themselves and we looked at comparable um, host agreements in surrounding areas. Um, I think, you know, in, in as part of that effort, um, we really spent a lot of time trying to understand what negative impact, if any, our proposed business model would have on this town. And so we considered security, we considered um, traffic, we considered odor, the things that are kind of most common to cultivation environments. Um, and after looking at the structure, of course, working with our engineers, we're really pleased to say that we, we have been unable to find significant impact, if any, um, to the town. And of course, we're very eager to hear if there are concerns that you would like to share with us. Um, with that in mind, we started to consider uh, surrounding neighbors or neighborhoods and areas where these fees have already been assessed, um, most notably Pittsfield, which had a $60,000 flat fee for the um, community impact fee that raised up to 200,000 by year five. Um, we, we also considered our, our projected revenues um, with the facility as the, the size that it is, we, we don't have our financials in place at this time. A lot of that will be aligned to the design of the facility itself. Um, for those of you familiar with this kind of uh, crop, there's definitely phases of, of agriculture here and not all of those are revenue driving. So we do anticipate having a significant R&D component within the uh, cultivation environment. And once we know what the exact site will look like, We'll have a better sense of our revenue and our projections. Um, so with this in mind, we're pleased to present a, a, a gradually increasing fee structure over the span of five years, um, which would begin with a $100,000 um, fee in year one and two, increasing to $150,000 in year three, um, $200,000 in year four, and $300,000 in year five. Um, our thinking on that, of course, is that, you know, considering what reasonable means on the fee side of things, um, it would give our business a chance to actually build that into our budget and we feel it would give the community itself a chance to actually factor in those funds as you're looking at your um, township and infrastructure planning. Uh, I'd love to hear your questions at this time. I always struggle. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. I always struggle when I hear businesses of I don't care what kind of business sure. come in to the boardroom and say they don't have a firm understanding of their revenue projections. Having written a lot of business plans, <coughs> knowing what it takes to find investors, I'm sure you've done a pro forma. I'm sure you've done customer inquiry. I'm sure you've done the basic things necessary to see if you have a minimal viable product. You had to have. So when, when I hear we have no idea what our revenue projections are, I sort of like, oh, that, that's just not true. And, and I apologize, maybe I'm wrong. No. But, but I, I've tried to say what you said to an investor, and they've said, well, come back to us later. Because I, I wasn't ready for prime time with that investor. So I Fair point. May I respond? Yes. Completely fair and probably a miswording. I'm a little nervous. Um, we do have a business plan. We have considered what these numbers are. And um, you know, for color on this conversation, I've watched wholesale canvas sell for a wide range of prices and and that's what we're looking at here, a wholesale model. Um, that is a little bit trickier on the projection side because of the economic and market factors that are are difficult to project in a new space. So in Colorado, over the span of the five years that I was working intimately there, I watched the market price slide from 3,500 a pound to 700 a pound. So 
it is it is challenging but to your point of course we've considered you know what those what the impact of that would be I think as it relates to this what we want to do is set up a fee structure that we can both commit to because I think there's there's a win-win there for us and certainly a win-win on the projection side for the town and um, when we looked at you know what our total revenue would be the number one factor for us is how much of this space are we actually going to allocate to um, flowering plants so the plants move through three phases of cultivation flowering is the the phase we care about and that you will care about from a you know a tax perspective and from a sales perspective looking at markets that have collapsed in themselves um, there's a lot of them throughout the US I think Massachusetts has done it pretty incredible job of protecting the businesses that they have licensed by trying to do this in a gradual manner. Um, and so from a business planning perspective, I feel really good about that and it was why we wanted to be in Massachusetts. The counter, of course, is, is what I just said, but there's so much variability there. And so when we looked at what would this cost, like what, what could we sell this for in 10 years or five years? Um, right now, the market value is $6,000 a pound. I, I expect that to fall to a thousand or fifteen hundred and it could take ten years and it could take five um, so I think as we looked at that okay if we're doing ten million in you know revenue or we're doing five million or we're doing twenty million can we come up with a fee arrangement that allows you to say we can commit to this per year and go and do you know whatever it is that we want to do as a town so your your question is more than fair um, and we have thought about that and I apologize for suggesting that we haven't considered those numbers at all, but more that landing on a hard number is is quite the feat in this well, you've space. But you've thrown a dart. You clearly, you've thrown a dart. Um, Absolutely, you have. I wouldn't say we've thrown a dart, but we've definitely considered comparable markets um, that offer both medical and adult use licensure. We've looked at population size, and we've considered. You know what are the the rates of patient registration here versus other surrounding communities um, we've thought about you know is there a draw for for people purchasing from other states coming into Western Mass whether it's from New York or somewhere else um, but in some ways the industry is throwing a dart and so we're kind of we're working with the the facts that we have but also making assumptions as any startup does and so right. certainly open to discussing that arrangement but as we thought about percentage versus hard dollar value um, we kept coming back to that hard dollar value and that you know a predictable amount because the visibility is really good for us as a business and you know we feel for the town as well okay. so uh, you said your revenues to the town were going to increase every year is that based on expanding your operation there every year or is that just more sales based on, on your initial uh, facility that you're going to build what, what's that based on sure um, because of the size of the facility we're in a really fortunate position because we can expand gradually um, I think that's really smart and looking at failed operations which we, we spent a lot more time looking at those to make sure that we're ahead of those kinds of challenges um, so we, you know, we intend to use a smaller amount of space, but are really excited that there's this footprint to grow into over time. We, that is a piece that's, that's very much based on what the market is doing um, and what you know, the overall demand is. As a wholesaler, where we're not able to produce products on this, this space because of the zoning, um, all we can do is cultivate really high quality medicine and, and product and move that out to other other buyers um, so it's a little bit difficult to know what that what that will look like and what the exact um, rate of expansion will be but the plan is to truly examine the market um, at time of construction and figure out how to how to grow that space and ultimately as quickly as possible I'd love to see all of it used um, you know in a short amount of time as possible and I think that the town probably shares my interest in that from a from a tax perspective but that part is a little bit gray so you're proposing to grow all this indoors in the existing greenhouses? Correct. So Using all, all the space in existing? Or? The, the plans that have been um, put forth to, to date um, do have the, the entire project using the existing space. Um, there were preliminary conversations about 
expanding on one of the walls to add office space only. So that would allow for most of the greenhouse environment to actually go towards cultivation purposes. Um, but it, it, would, it would remain in the, in the footprint that it's in now. The major change to the facade of the structure would involve uh, the erection of, of metal kind of corrugated walls. The existing structure is, uh, would not work from a, from a security perspective. Um, so the, the structure as well as the roof would be replaced. Um, and I know one of the conversations had a, a concern about light emission on the current property. Um, the new design would actually completely limit or eliminate any light pollution whatsoever uh, because of the installation of the new siding in the roof. So the initial and in the future growing would all be in greenhouses, everything Correct. in greenhouses. Correct. So then maybe the, the question is to the, the owners, what is happening with the, with the rest of the, of the property? Is that you're still retaining that and they're only getting the greenhouses or, that's, or is that's all of that available? Structure. Or is that all available for future use of growing cannabis? We're not anticipating any outdoor growth of cannabis whatsoever. There may be other agricultural products as long as they're complementary. We have to be very careful that there's no cross-pollination or any pesticides used around the perimeter of the property cannot get inside the building. But right now, we're leasing just the building to the tenant. And I would add that both our site plan review and special permit are for approval only of the cultivation inside the greenhouse structure. Yes. Okay, that's what the ZBA gave us, like, you had ZBA approval? Correct. Yes. For, yes. We got that last Thursday. Inside the structure, okay, because I think some of the abutters are concerned about their property <coughs> values, but uh, if you're not expanding other than what the greenhouse is, that may, may not be a concern. Correct. Right. Just or you'd have to come back to a ZBA to come back and say if you want to expand. Add some more space, space to the greenhouse, but that's okay. not our current plan. And in addition to that, the current state regulations limit the square footage of grow, and so by the time the operation expands to fill the entirety of the greenhouse, they're going to be very close to that cap anyway. So under current regulations, it would actually be not, it would not be possible to expand beyond what can be held in the greenhouse today. But just, just to clarify a point that she was making, under the ag zoning of the property today, we're prevented from doing um, extraction of oils and manufacturing of other products. All we can do is cultivation and processing and packaging. So it's somewhat limiting the use because of the ag zoning. In the future, it may make sense for 50% or more of the the grown flour to go into other products, the oils and the vapes and things like that, and we can't do that under the current egg zoning. This is cultivation only, processing and packaging. So it's somewhat limiting in terms of what their business model would like to do. What they're doing in California includes the extraction and the other products. Cannot do that under your current zoning here. So once they start operation in the greenhouses, what's gonna happen with the remaining property? We may lease it out to DeWitt. He may continue to grow you know, other products, um, but we don't have any other plans for what's going to happen outside the greenhouse. What's considered a compatible product? Any, uh, probably any vegetable crop. Any vegetable crop. Tree crops. Anything other than anything related to hemp. We would not do hemp on the outside of the property. So what you guys do now? Yeah, what we do now. Exactly. Culinary herbs, vegetables, Swiss chard, like bok choy, whatever. The owner's intent is to maintain the same character of the greenhouse so that the, the, the abutters, it should have zero impact on them. It'll look exactly as it does today, except for the fact that we're adding a gate across the, the driveway on State Route and across the driveway coming in off Christian Lane. And the metal walls, which, sorry to say, will remove the pink and purple glow in there. Panels on the building, walls. So you guys... We're going to need to find a new... We have to call the place that used to be purple glowing. <laughs> so apparently it's also how the same police find the uh, police station. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, yeah. Well, just get the bat beacon out. Say. Would you guys consider some sort, sort of 
I'm going to poke fun at you, and I apologize for doing that. Um, vegetation beyond the little shrubs that exist around the propane tanks um, to make the, the metal walls a little bit more visually appealing. Like some sort of hedge around the building? Well, wall? that's why I'm poking fun here, because the arborvitae that's in front of the propane tanks right now, you know, they really, it's They're being growing. kind to call it vegetable. You gotta be patient when <laughs> things are growing. Yeah, I mean, well, it takes time. The, the ones that they, that they planted by the Stuck solar by installation have all died now, so. Um, I hope they're I growing, think they're green, know. they're vibrant. You should see how much they are growing. Okay. We should have documented it. a landscaping you. plan. We'd be open to a landscaping plan. However, the the growing environment here is, you know, it's 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 seasonal. Right. So I get it, I get it. and I'll you know, I've been here for fifteen years and I guess wrong every time I think that I've got the right vegetative cover. We we tried to put blue spruces up in front of the storage tanks at Yankee Candle and it, it doesn't work. I mean big maple trees would have been better. We do uh, have a plant biologist as part of the team, so something I think hopefully a metal wall is just not yeah. I, I think we have access to competent landscape personnel that could we plan can, something. We can absolutely uh, find an improved aesthetic uh, and something that is very likely to live. A very reasonable condition. Zoning board approval suggested the same thing. One of our abutters, the Boussiers, suggested they would like a hedge so that they, they don't have to look at the backside of the solar panels in the wintertime when the foliage is not grown in across the wetlands ditch. And we agreed to that. I understand that one time there was discussion of, of the increased water consumption and how that would tax our water system. Is that yeah, that Chris, you want to comment on that? Right. Uh, so we've had an initial meeting with the water commission. I'm actually stepping over there in about three minutes to continue it. Um, but essentially, uh, the way we left the previous meeting was uh, that the choke point is going to be the number of filters that they're currently building in the new manganese uh, treatment uh, facility. However, that facility has space to add um, additional filters which would increase the capacity of the system. Um, and so uh, in order to guarantee the, the water supply that we're asking for, um, Mustang is looking to contribute uh, those filters um, to, the, to the treatment plant. Um, that's something we're going to continue discussion on. Uh, They've indicated the, the community has the capacity. The aquifer does not have any issues meeting 28,000 gallons per minute, which is what DeWitt is using in his peak day. season during the 28,000 gallons per, uh, per day, which There's DeWitt uses in his peak times during the summer, but this might be more of a constant demand throughout the year. Right, the, the peak demand of the new site will be very similar to what it is today in the middle of July. Um, it's those off-peak times where the demand is going to increase. Um, what about the natural gas? We have a certain limitation on the natural gas that's coming in um, based on Berkshire's commitment to DeWitt of about 2.4 million BTUs. So that meets his needs today on the north section of the greenhouse but he's using propane largely on the south part of the greenhouse for heating of the floor. Our electric consumption is gonna increase from about 800 kW rated to about four megawatts. Eversource has said we absolutely can supply that amount, that amount of power to that location. 800 kilowatts rated today to about four megawatts. Once we reach full build out, if the market supports fill. Four megawatts, yes. That's a rated amount, not the hours per year. Currently, the solar provides about 650, so the solar currently meets about 85% of DeWitt's demand. Going forward, it'll meet about 15% of our demand. Follow up about the water. Uh, other, other than, I guess, the reduced Revenue to the to the water department. Is there any thought of your own water system to supply water here, or is, is DeWitt looked at that in the past for your own water system? We we have sufficient commitment from um, from the town's water yeah. supplies to meet all of our needs. What we are going to do is continue to do rainwater capture and storage and recycling. So water we use for irrigation, roughly 90% of that flows through and is captured and recirculated. So 
we're very efficient with our water use and our reuse with the new facility. Joyce, you're a community. Yes, yeah, well, that's, I, I, was, I wrote down my two questions, I'll let you guys go first. No, beautiful. Okay. Um, so, uh, just this one's really out of curiosity. Someone mentioned the agricultural zoning and, and that put some restrictions. You had mentioned research. Sure. So, um, when you say research, can you help me understand better what research you can do sort of in the context of it's really oh, growing? On the right? plants. <laughs> right, right. Sure. Um, so it's interesting in Mass because we have a medical and an adult use program. Um, my belief is still that regardless of how you're purchasing this, that there is med medicinal value to this and that warrants an extensive amount of research on the genetic side. Um, because of federal prohibition on this, there's very limited research happening at the state or national level as it relates to efficacy here. So um, one of the you know initiatives that's very near and dear to our team's heart, specifically um, Dr. Flannery, is studying various genetics as those align to the various approved conditions in this state and, and you know as national legalization opens up to other conditions in other places. And so understanding which genetics or hybridizations of those plants um, are most beneficial to someone suffering from Crohn's disease versus a child suffering from you know, epileptic seizures. So on the, the research and development side, there's a lot to be done there. Um, there's also a significant amount of research to do as it relates to yield um, and also um, pest mitigation. Some of these varieties, just like regular vegetables, are far more resistant to pests. They're more resistant to um, disease. And so as we look to optimize this, ultimately you know, generating greater revenues for everyone here. Um, we are looking to cultivate the most you know, highest regarded plants that we can, um, and that will happen over a span of time. And so as we think about how to use that facility, the goal certainly in the end is to use as much of the footprint for actual cultivation. Um, but in those earlier, that earlier period where the market may not really you know, warrant us using all that space, we have significant interest in using a, a piece of that to study these um, these plants and the breeding of these plants. Okay, so um, these are plants that you would grow but never sell? Correct. Okay, yeah. and, and the state allows for that. I remember there's some sort of like seed to, yeah, so we're, seed to customer. We're very interested, of, seed to sale, yes. Seed to sale. That's the whole thing. So yeah, we're very, very interested in understanding Again, the genetics here yeah, um, yeah. and doing that internal you know testing so when we're selling to a customer whether that's a manufacturer or selling to a retailer um, that's part of the seed to sale chain and change in custody but you're um, allowed to grow something that's not going we're to seed able, to sale? what's the formal limit on cultivation for there's parameters in place surrounding how you cultivate for um, research and development purposes so okay. you do need to do when you're thinking about testing um, any product that's going through the supply chain is going to move through a third-party laboratory that's been licensed by the state. Um, we're looking into adding you know, our own testing methods in-house um, so we're able to kind of facilitate our own learning about these plants. We also have a pretty extensive breeding program um, in the existing environments out in California. And so you know, if Massachusetts winds up limiting or, or changing the rules surrounding that, um, that's a still an interest of ours that's existing in other places. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry to keep, because I know we're, we're sure. going over time here, but um, what, uh, where would the things you're not allowed to do in the agricultural zone happen? Like, I think extraction was one thing. Yeah. Um, it, where, it, where do you plan for that to happen? Um, so assuming, you know, if we can get through this process and get through licensing, our goal would be to identify the best manufacturers possible um, that will ultimately purchase this from us as a wholesaler and they'll actually carry out the manufacturing of finished products. So those could be oil-based medicines um, or even just, or even raw oil for, you know, infusion into other things. So okay. until so such a time... So you're not vertically integrated? No, here. we don't have any intention of becoming vertically integrated. I think, you know, I mean, candidly, if this was a really great relationship with the town and there was a way to introduce manufacturing at a later point as everyone becomes more comfortable with this, I think there's certainly merit to having both of those facilities working in tandem. I think that's been a really good model, especially for states and cities um, from an oversight perspective, to have both of those things working together. 
Um, but given the you know the current construct, specifically with zoning, um, we would be solely focused on cultivation. All right. Um, can you tell me anything about your revenue projections? Like, what are your revenue projections for years one through five? I can, and I also wanted to tell you because I forgot because I was nervous. Um, the the fee structure that we laid out, which was of course gradual over those five years, did not include um, the contributions that we intend to make to charitable organizations as well as um, the educational programming. So just to make sure that was clear, one of the things we had talked about previously was. Um, a $5,000 contribution in years one and two to charitable organizations that is are designated by the select board, um, scaling to 10,000 in year three, and then on the educational side, it was the same thing, a $5,000 contribution um, in years one and two, ramping up to 10,000 as our um, as our production ramps up as well. So in all, in the design of all of this, it was to try to be as aligned as possible to what you know, what we feel our ramp up might look like based on other markets and based on Massachusetts. Um, we are using uh, $1,500 a pound was sort of our, our, our average over a 10 year span. Um, going back to the DART reference, there is a little bit of that at play. Um, we were talking today and looking at Massachusetts, you're seeing wholesale pricing between 4,500 and 6,000 a pound. I don't believe the market can bear that based on licensure coming up in the state. So we tried to create something that was um, reasonable over over that span of time. The, the other big variable, again, is how much of the square footage do we intend to use out of the gate. Um, so it's, it's difficult, I guess, to, to fully land on that. Um, when we were putting together the host community impact fee proposal, um, we started thinking about, okay, if, if this was $10 million in revenue in year one, what does that look like for the town? Is it feasible that we would be at you know, 15 million by year three or year two? I, I would like to believe that this, the 10 million is you know, a conservative starting place based on the expertise of this team. Um, but it, you know, being very candid and honest, there's other factors that are you know, very much outside of our hands. So as we, we are working hard to try and learn Massachusetts and to kind of study the growth rate, um, but as you know, it's a very new <laughs> market with, with very limited data to, to really review. Um, and I think the numbers that we're all seeing right now, while they're high and there's excitement in that, um, they're not reflective of the actual industry that we're talking about. And I think we're gonna see a lot of that change, you know, even within the next 18 months. Two quick questions. One, is the property actually sold? No, we uh, we are not required to close until they complete their state licensing process. So next step would be to complete a host community agreement. We need that before they can apply for their state cultivation license. Okay, once this happens, how soon will you be able to grow or, or sell from the site here? Once schedule? we complete the purchase, it could be three to six months to complete the tenant improvements before they could start occupying. So we're hopeful they can get through the state licensing in a six month process. We're anticipating closing the purchase in probably the first quarter of next year. Three to six months to complete the tenant improvements for the first phase, which would be less than 25% uh, of the space we're purchasing. So they might occupy uh, third quarter of next year at the earliest. How many people do you employ right now? Well, it's a little bit. Uh, I, I employ up to 70 people over the course of the whole farm season. Yeah. But we farm a lot of outdoor acres. In that greenhouse right there, strictly in that greenhouse, we're up to 15 to 20 people at times. Um, so, I mean, my, my whole workforce is much larger than that, but that includes all of my food production. Yeah. That's something we spoke with him about, the fact that this would be a you know perpetual harvest model where it's not like normal crops where you have harvest periods once or maybe twice a year. We'll be perpetually harvesting year-round. So um, in addition to offering employment to all current employees on the site, assuming they want to join forces with us, um, our next wave of hiring would be ideally from the local community. And, we are looking for ways to try and promote those roles. Um, anyone that is interested in, in joining in those roles would be offered extensive um, 
cross training to figure out ways of using past experience wherever um, relevant and in that time frame where we're becoming you know operationally ready on the construction side the plan is to try to train anyone joining the team in an existing facility so that by the time we're open we truly are operationally ready and the training has already been completed but there's going to be a gap there's going to be some, there's going to be some layoff period of, of three to six months it sounds like between sale and ops i don't think so really? um, because of that training this is a very challenging plant okay. and so the idea is that that hands-on training is actually supporting a workforce in another market of course there's you know, I'll be honest, there's probably challenges with that relevant to people being here and residing here, um, but we have started the process of thinking about how we can be facilitating that training locally um, for the most part, as well as hands-on training in other markets so that everyone is ready, ready to rock and roll when we get um, licensed. But there is a steep learning curve, although I'm sure folks that have been hands-on with plants for a long time will have a much easier road than, than someone who hasn't. Who will it be the actual grower? Will it be somebody from the organization, or is it going to be DeWitt that's the actual grower there that yeah. oversees everything? It won't be me. I have a black thumb. You can't grow anything. But it will be will be Robbie to start. Um, you know, he hit the plan now is that um, my team will handle compliance and operations for the facility. Um, ultimately, appointing someone into a, the full time head grower position. Um, that is from Massachusetts, ideally from the surrounding area, but we anticipate the entire team being here during that ramp up period to make sure that operations are um, coming off the ground effectively. I might, that's all the questions I have at the moment. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Yep, thanks. Thank you. We're on your agenda for the 26th. So a few of the other senior management teams from Dr. Rob's uh, group will be back in two weeks. Okay. All right, uh, next thank up, you. Karen, thank you for your uh, patience. Um, uh, Karen Gaston to discuss the proposed mar marijuana retail establishment at 85 State Road. So why don't you come on up in the front. It'll be easier for the camera to catch you. Yes, absolutely. Hi. Hello. Hi. So this isn't my first time here. Yeah. So I've been here. First name basis. Now. That's right. Um, and we had listened to the concerns of the folks in the community and the traffic and the um, concerns regarding the actual site. I know traffic was a huge issue that we discussed the last meeting. Uh, and we have now a new proposed site of 85 State Road. And I'm going to turn it over now to Ed Lally, my friend. I'm going to pull up the assessor's maps too. So sure. I'm, not, I'm not trying to diss you by like doing my email or something. Good evening. Um, we went to uh, the ZBA and, and uh, at that meeting, nothing was accomplished except that uh, <clears throat> we met with a lot of the neighbors after the uh, meeting in the hallway out here and had conversations with them to hear their concerns. Karen also appeared, as she said before you, and her issues of uh, concerns of traffic. And that, that site was uh, constrained in that there wasn't a lot of space between the building and the street. It was only 32 feet and it was supposed to be 50 um, by your zoning regulations, so we needed variance. Uh, additionally, cars were parking nose in against the building and then backing out onto the state. It was a very bad situation. The parking area on the south side of the building was, um, didn't meet your minimum dimensional requirements. It pre-existed and it functioned at some level, but not optimal. Um, additionally, putting parking around the other side of the building uh, ended up covering too much of the site with pavement or hard surface, impervious surface, generating too much storm water. And it didn't really provide enough parking for the uses of the property, which was um, the electrical company, which needed six or seven spaces, and then this proposed use which um, while there are 52 facilities in the state that are up and running and there are four right up 91 uh, in this general vicinity, um, it's anticipated that each of the facilities that does open will have until more facilities come online, um, a bit more traffic than you might normally predict. And so <clears throat> Karen looked around uh, to see where could she find a site that had 
enough space for adequate parking. Um, she uh, commissioned the traffic engineer from uh, F.A. Hesketh and Associates to um, review the use, look at the uh, traffic generation data that has been established nationally um, based on studies of uh, California and uh, Colorado primarily, <clears throat> and um, advised her that she should have a site that had close to 40 parking spaces um, because of this initial first couple of ye first year or first couple of years at the most, um, uh, you know, uh, use of the site. We anticipate that the use of the site is going to go up like this and then taper off as things stabilize with more user, uh, more facilities coming online. Um, she also was concerned because we had comments at the ZBA meeting from residents who were basically, you know, yeah, we'd like to see that in town, but not in my backyard. There's certain benefits to the town to having this type of facility here, as, as you know, and, and that's why the town elected to have them here. Um, but then, they, like any use that generates traffic, it can create a, a problem for adjacent property owners. And so there are residential uses of the property. There is one property across the street that's a rental property. Um, the rest of the properties in the neighborhood are, are commercial or industrial or, or uh, agricultural fields. And so we felt that this site um, lend, lend itself to um, this type of use. <coughs> we, um, we've, we have an existing driveway that comes into a fenced yard where there's a, a number of different articles stored, some old uh, uh, st uh, over-the-road trailers that are no longer functional for over the road, um, and an assortment of uh, antiques, unique pieces of equipment, and other things. Um, the owner of the property wishes to um, phase out of that business as rapidly as possible, and Karen wishes to establish her facility as rapidly as possible. Um, he's going to continue to use this for a while. Um, Karen's um, agreement is a, uh, a rent to own or a lease to own, <clears throat> so that she will not be just a tenant, but a, a property owner and a, and a taxpayer in town. There's an existing uh, garage building, which is uh, right now full of antiques and brick back, and that will be used for uh, the proposed facility. Uh, the site is pretty much covered with um, uh, processed stone. Uh, there's a wide, as I said, there's a wide apron here with uh, some back out parking onto the highway. What we're going to do is reconfigure the uh, apron for, with a, and narrow it, make it a 24 foot drive in accordance with your specifications. Uh, two rows of uh, parking. Your minimum of space is 19 by 8.5. We're opting for a, um, uh, excuse me, uh, 18 by 8.5. And we're opting for a nine foot wide parking space just because um, I drive a big vehicle and I hate being in a narrow space. Um, and I, I think it's a better standard. So there are a total of 40 parking spaces shown here. <clears throat> this facility um, needs two, um, but because there's 40, we need two accessible spaces. We thought it would be best for one accessible space near the building and one accessible space near the other building. There'll be a new entryway. The, the facade of the building will be changed be a cupola put on top the two big doors are going the door on the end is going that'll all be covered over uh, with reconstruction in accordance with building codes and um, some uh, two windows with an entry door to sort of um, replicate the look of this facility which has two windows and an entry door in the center um, the front 982 square feet will be used for the uh, facility Karen has a uh, some copies of the floor plan she can uh, send and share with you. Do these exist electronically as well? I'm sorry, what? Do these exist electronically yes. as well to get to Amy? Absolutely. Yeah, we, we can uh, send you both the site plan and, uh, and the uh, other plans soon. These are pretty hot off the press being produced just recently. And, and that's on the west side of 510, correct? Correct. Right. Yeah. Just pulling up right here. Okay. Yeah, I thought that. Yeah. You thought that might be the case. I thought. I, yes. We know each other so. And and I was correct that I was thinking was the the right parcel. Uh, yeah. The, there, the, the property is is tapered to a point. The the uh, route ten, route five ten pulls away from the property, and um, the uh, Commonwealth owns a piece of land that goes all the way down to a very fine point right about here. Um, there's a 115 or 120 feet of chain link fence and then some stockade fence. Um, we're going to allow the uh, owner as he faces out to store some of his equipment here. He's, he's 
talking to me already about how he's going to um, remove the over the road trailers, take them to the scrap yard, and, and this is going, this is going, and pretty much he has a rapid phase out so uh, proposal. So now this, this fence makes more sense now. Pardon? The fence here. I get the Google. Uh, yeah, Google Earth, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm the, it's amazing. Which parcel has the rental property? The, the um, what is now the, the garage street. with the two big doors. No, 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 sorry, no. residential. Oh, I'm sorry, it's right across the street. Across There's the street. A, an old farmhouse yeah. or an old yeah, house here. here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. kind of blocked by a packet there. Yeah, it's, it, it's tough to. It's this house right here. Yeah. Okay. Have they been made aware of this? I don't think so, no. Okay. We, we, just, we just finished these plans the last right. week. I just didn't know whether you would stop by to no, but we'll make a point to test do that. the waters. We'll make a point to do that. He, they don't live there. It's a straight rental. Well, right, but oh. test the waters of the river. You know. Right. Okay. Well, 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 I'm a big believer in it. Yeah, I agree. Okay. So the, this fence that now kind of um, blocks off the, uh, what shall we say, the antique center from um, the building that looks more like a house than a garage. That fence is not going to be there okay, anymore. That, that fence goes from this corner of this building uh -huh. yeah. across here and then down across there. It's right. on this plan and showing it as being removed. Oh, and then okay. that fence continues on to here and then a stockade fence onto here. Right. And the fence along the road will remain. Okay. And um, just to, we, we thought it was, it's not, an, it's not an unattractive fence at all. It's relatively new. And uh, we thought it would be, uh, it's black vinyl. And we thought it would be a deterrent to any possible people stopping it on the side of the road and, and trying to run into the facility. Yeah, um, I, I, that's exactly what I was thinking. But right. So we we want to we want to leave it there. And the ten foot requirement of, for for a landscape strip from the um, street right of way line. Of course, the street right of way line tapers over here, but we've kept that ten foot strip all along here. And we're planting trees as though this were a street frontage. You have a requirement in your town of uh, trees on 40 feet on center. These space out nicely at 36. So we have a couple extra trees there. Then there are lights with 20 foot poles. Your limit is uh, 25. And we're, we're having a decorative shielded light down onto the parking lot. Uh, there's a light here, a light here, and another light here. And then there's two lights over here. Um, the lights on the front of this building will, will properly illuminate this area. So there'll be a safe and secure site. Um, separated from the street by a, a fairly significant fence that is in good repair, um, some landscaping, um, and we, um, by the zoning regulations, or by the bylaws, uh, we're required to have 11 parking spaces. We have 40. So I think that that initial rush of, you know, there's not, not a lot of these around and a lot of people are coming to this one because it's handy, will be handled by the 40. We, we as I said, we. We um, asked uh, Scott Hesketh to uh, take a look at the traffic and he prepared a report. He just uh, sent me a copy today, it's not signed, but it basically says that the uh, level of service on this road and, and at this intersection would, um, would not be deteriorated and that there's more than 650 feet of sight line distance from this, from this driveway. Where are your utilities on there? Pardon? Where, do you show us where your utilities Yes, um, are? existing, th this building already has its own electrical service. Okay. It needs a new septic system, which would be put out here. It's going to have a, a, a one a can bathroom for employees only, because this is not a restaurant or another, uh, you know, so it, so it doesn't need a public restroom, but it will have a bathroom inside, a new septic system. And because it's one property, it's going to tie onto the water line that serves this house, so we don't have to disturb uh, traffic in the roof. Where's, where's the water line on that? The water line is right now, it's uh, right there, and we're tapping over and coming into this building. So the town water line runs? It's in the street, or next to the street. Yeah. Well, okay, that crosses 91 somewhere there. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know if the water line crosses 91. But yeah, it does. It crosses further north. Yeah. Further yeah. north, yeah. Okay. Okay. The, um, the building will be, as we said, modified. You have the plans in front of you. We're adding a cupola to the roof and, and changing the siding, the doors, and the windows to make it look as much as possible like a, a barn or an agricultural structure. And the, uh, the windows and the uh, door sort of mimic the uh, architecture of the smaller building on the site. It's one LaSalle drive. Okay. Yeah. 
Here's, he's asking about the uh, across the street where the street is 91. What is that? Quite a distance. But just yeah, quite a distance on the other side. I think Fred's just curious. So that's and that's also down a you know, that's significantly lower in elevation than yeah. okay. anything else. Right. Just yeah, the, yeah, that's on uh, at the end of that. Uh, yeah, that's because yeah, that's, that's Clabrack Road over there. And of course, you have in your bylaws restrictions on 500 feet from schools, nurseries, yeah. place where kids gathering, et cetera, et cetera. We're, we're more than 500 feet from anything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't have any questions. So I uh, just I think you might have said this. So I'm sorry if I uh, if I missed it. Um, you were going to rent to own yes. here. So for some period of time, <coughs> there'll be, uh, I don't know how that really, at some point the ownership officially changes. But for a while, there'll be about two different entities right. using the place. One will be an owner, one will be a renter. And at some point, that's going to flip, presumably. And you would no, be the owner. will take owner the property in and its entirety. In the end, in the in entirety, and at that point is when the um, the person who's here, his name I can't remember. Anymore. Mark Batty. Mark. Yes. Um, would be moving out, which is what he wants to do. Yes. Do you have a good uh, any idea? I mean, he can only uh, estimate. He's like, looking, What's the time frame for that? Is that he, five he years? He wants to be out by a year. Oh, okay. Yeah, he he'd like to. So he, he wants to move up state. So he oh. wants to be out. So okay. would you accommodate him staying? Once you took ownership and just have him as a and be a landlord, if he wanted to stay, I have to see why not. I would. I'd be open to it. And um, so, so I'm assuming he he gets his wish and he's able to to leave and go to where he wants to go, mm -hmm. what would um, the the building looks more like a house? Yes, it does. Um, is that something that figures into your future plans, or is that not at this time? I haven't really even given thought to what we would do. It's a small yeah. thing, maybe offices. I, uh, I'm not sure at this point. It's probably zone commercial, right? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I really I don't have any plans right now. Oh, okay. He, he's expressed a desire to move as quickly as possible, and we're trying to right. accommodate him. Okay. What size parcel is that? How many acres is all of that? Yeah, we have the assessors now. How many acres is that? Total it's, about, it's about one, about point nine, I think. Okay. Um, it says on here, I just can't remember what it says. 0 0.89. Uh, point nine zero acres. It's, the assessor has it as point eight nine nine something yeah. something, about point nine. We just felt that after listening to the town and, and not just the authorities in the town and this right. group, but yeah. the neighbors, yeah. um, right. that They're the this that other site just wasn't going to work properly for anybody. And um, you know, I told Karen, <clears throat> the worst thing that you can have is a business that's doing really well and there's no place to park because people will drive in. This happens to restaurants all the time. People drive in, can't find a place to park, they don't come back. You know, they're not going to drive out of their way to find out they can't park there and end up going someplace else for now. This works much or better for any other guys. service. Pardon? This works much better for you guys. Yeah, and and there's certain you know the neighborhood is better for this kind of use. The existence of the fence, um, the fact that we're up against the highway and, and you know can't bother anybody here. So we just think it's a much better facility. And I think the terms of your um, community agreement are Karen's pretty much in agreement with the standard format and there shouldn't be any problem there at all. Well that'll be Joyce and Bailey when, when we get to that. That's right. Point. And, and the, the community host agreement, Czar. If we have Czars in the board. Zarina. It has to actually the board has to ask the community. And I, I think Karen also supplied you with that's right. financial um, right. financial projections and business plan. Yeah we yeah, we we definitely want the community outreach meeting to happen and you know the drill on that about notification and so on. Yes. Um, so are there any other questions or concerns? Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. I, yeah, I have no more questions at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this isn't finalized. Um, I can leave it with you, but it's when do you think it's gonna be finalized? Pardon? When do you have it 
when do you anticipate it being final? Within a week. I mean, we just have to, <coughs> for instance, the traffic study is not signed, it hasn't been peer reviewed. Um, this plan has been drawn up and has a lot of note, notes on it saying what to do, but there may be something missing, and I just want to cross T's and dot I's. Okay. You'll get us the copy when it's done. Yeah. Sure. Eight, eight, and eight, we'll send, uh, if you want, we can send an electronic copy of things as they exist now to the town. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, electronic copies are great, but keeping them up to date is important to us, too. Okay. okay. Would you rather we just wait until it's finalized? What do you think, Brian? If it's going to be a week, then. Yeah. If it's going to be a week, I think we could just wait until it's finalized. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, if, if I could, I just have one question. Oh, sure. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to ask if anybody else had any questions or comments. Jim. Um, Shoot. I heard mention about the possibility of the parking spots in front people backing out onto 5 and 10. That happens now. It will not happen in the okay. future. I just wanted to clarify. The parking that. is being totally um, re laid out and, and reorganized okay. um, to absolutely avoid that. Yeah. What I think it's because you guys couldn't so, see this either in I, the back there. Yeah, like if, no if anybody wants, I don't want to take up any more yeah. of your time, but if anybody wants to look at this in the hall, I'm happy to spend a few minutes. Have you met our police chief? No. I Hello, this is our police Hi. chief. You should, you should yeah, right. get in touch with him about yeah. security plans and stuff. So. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Good on that. Kind of important. Thank Thanks. you. Good night. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I know here. Okay. I just I right. you said it right now. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're uh, we're into the old business section. Which, um, we've got uh, 15 minutes or 17 minutes. Uh, so we have a um, request. Is there anyone here from the historical society? Okay. I thought they were going to be here, but I can. I just okay. Think so Brian, tell us about the historical society. Sure. I have long wanted a. Uh, a storage shed behind the town hall. Uh, but in your packet, there was a proposal um, uh, to put in a, a 10 foot by 14 foot shed, so pretty much behind the building. Um, 10 by 14? Yeah. How big was the barn back there? A lot bigger. Anybody remember? A lot bigger. Yeah. 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 But what was it? The barn was in Dahl Historic Society. Why I'm they just asking the just the structure way? itself. I'm just comparing. Yeah. They had any stuff there. It would okay. be typical, uh, I think sort of a typical uh, storage shed that, that that could be either built or bought and moved onto the site. They put it on put it on stones. Uh, their hope is that they could put it four feet from the building. Um, and I think they're really looking forward to store um, tables, chairs, grills, a lot of the equipment that they use for the, the spring festival and the fall yeah. festival, which they're currently storing in the milk bottle. I believe they're currently storing in the milk bottle. Um, but it's more convenient for, to have them there if that's going to be the location of the, the facilities. I don't think they're looking to store any of their historically significant items there because it's in a conditioned space. And, yeah. <coughs> Um, I mean, two concerns that I still need to check in. We would want the, the permission to, you know, we want the sign off of the building inspector as to the as to the location. And I think we also need, and I've sent an email out, but I haven't heard back from Mass Historic Commission because this property is now under a preservation restriction oh. held by Mass Historic Commission as 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 a as a part of the grant that we um, took from them. So we would need their blessing as to. Okay, so just, how it looks. so just the uh, the fact that in the note they say we have met with the historical commission, they met with the Whitley Historical Commission, not the state. Right, because we know that once we approach Mass Historic Commission, they're going to say, hey, Whitley Historic Commission, what do you guys think? And then. And, and they are on board? Yes. Well, yeah. I mean, it's sort of implied here, but they don't ever directly say that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I don't want to make a big deal out of it, but I continue to be uncomfortable with a non-town organization taking up that much. We have, we, have, we have set a precedent that 
We have no legs to stand on if any nonprofit wants to come in and say, hey, let's do this and we're gonna take it for free because this is what you're doing already. And this just adds to that anxiety I have on that precedent we are setting. It, this isn't the Historical Commission, this is the Historical Society. And I love the Historical Society. They're great, they do amazing things for the town, but they are a separate organization. <clears throat> and, it is a, and it is a very dangerous precedent that we are allowing them to, to occupy, I don't know what percentage of, of, of town hall. Um, n now we are going to have them occupy X percentage of the open space behind town hall. And again, it, it, it's a precedent that it, that really could bite us. But they, they pay a fee, a rental for, for the. They, they pay the, the. They pay utilities. They don't. I don't believe they pay a, a rental fee. Well, the, the utilities, yeah. Well, but but, but that's different. I mean, that's very different. Yeah, but we're, we're, it's not like we have a, a town hall and we're saying we need to rent this whole thing, I, and we've only got one tenant. Let's fill up all the rooms with other people. No, we've got other rooms have other um, other things specified for them, and if the historical society were to leave, then we we would we would get to decide what to do with the space. I would think that if the final decision would come to us. Cause but it's still a dangerous <coughs> it's still a dangerous precedent because because town the town is supporting a non-town entity at some level to some degree. And this just increases that a little bit. That's 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 my only that's my only concern. And and so then we have to okay. figure out down the road. I guess I'd like to see a picture of the building, what they're proposing, what it looks like. <clears throat> Metal siding, aluminum vinyl siding, windows, doors, what they look like. And I don't think the 14 foot shown in here is, is correct. I think it comes closer to the windows on the back side. I'd like to know exactly how close to the windows. Oh, from the 14 feet off the yeah, off 14 that corner. Yeah, 14 feet. Yeah, that's not that's not correct. Um, I measured it. It was about 20 feet, 20 feet to that to the window. To the window. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, we can we can. Well, then I guess I'd still like to see uh, pictures of what it's looking like. Yeah, what I mean, it, like it, and I think in part some before of that, they do it, so some of that might be. Controlled, uh, control is not the right word, but well, controlled by Mass Historic if they want. Well, if, they, if, assuming they're going to allow it, they may want it to look a certain way. Right. So I guess I guess for tonight's purposes, uh, if I just. Yes. I I feel like I don't have a strong objection. I understand the decision is not completely ours, but I feel like we're if we are one of the check marks. They right. might need to get this done. Then I'm not trying to stand in the way. Well, I, th I think I think you're one of the check marks, but you're the ones that if you said we don't want to shed in the backyard. Right, we, the we have off, a veto. Right. Then it. Right. Then. Yeah. I'm I'm not inclined to to veto the stand in the way. It's I guess it's I guess for tonight's purposes it should be continue to explore this opportunity in terms of zoning and mass historic commission. Yeah. Because if you yeah. guys said no, then you'll just stop then it. Then it stops. Not, we can stop the shed is certainly tracks. important. The aesthetics, to his friend points out. Yeah, it's yeah, 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 it's, it's, the yeah. shed's important. It's just that I struggle with the administrative right. part of it all. And, and I, I guess I, I'm still curious as what they're going to store there. Yeah, they say they are festival items. Well, twice a year, where they store them? Not well. They're in the center they're, school, or I guess the yellow barn where they, they have. They have. I think they, uh, they I've might been be told they storm in the milk bottle, but it's not that big milk bottle. Probably some of it's at various people's houses. Yeah. Or the grills. Yeah. All right, let's keep, keep going then. All right. Uh, item B under old business. Discuss the townwide tag sale proposed by the 200th anniversary committee. And I believe that must be split Susan's here. Yes. Yeah, so the 250th 501c3, so the nonprofit. Um, is planning a townwide tag sale for Saturday, September 7th, as we did last year. And as I mentioned at the last meeting, the difference is this time we would not be having the central flea market as well. It would purely be at homes throughout town for people who sign on to do this. 
what we did last year and we're hoping to do again this year is the um, 250th organization would take out one tag sale permit from the town that day and then anyone who wants to participate through the 250th would pay $20 to participate and we would handle advertising, Craigslist, Facebook, there's all these things. We'll ha distribute signs. And if, what we found out last time was the big draw was we gave out maps that showed all of the locations. So if you found one, you had a map to all of them. And it was very popular last year. Uh, the people who did the tag sales said a lot. They got a lot of good traffic from it. And it you know, put a little bit of money into the 501c3. What we would be asking the select board to do is to forego the standard tag sale permit fee from people who are participating in the 250th tag sale for that day. If somebody wants to do it through us, that 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 covers them. That gives you know they don't need to also get a permit through the town. And a one-off. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I shouldn't say a one-off because oh, we have to do it once a year. Once a year. We we hope to do this again the Saturday after Labor Day in 2020 as well. Not only does it get yeah, it got us I think five or six hundred dollars, which isn't nothing, but doesn't you know really pay for the cost of the event. One of the big benefits of it was it got people excited about the 250th. It was a way for the community to start getting involved and to know this is coming and to be a part of something for it. I, I have no problem with that. I, I would just think that one idea might be in, to add to your map to, to, to increase the, the marketability of the entire event and to draw as many people from outside of Whitley as possible, as well as Whitley people, is to make sure on the map it's highlighted, we're highlighting, oh, and here's where you can get something to eat at the Whitley Inn. Here's where you can, so that they're not just driving in, buying a lamp, and going to Northampton to have something yeah. to eat. I mean. It probably want to take restaurants that are open at those hours, which might really be homes. Well, of course. And not but, the Whitley Inn. But no, the, it's going to be all day tax sales, you know, or am I wrong? Last year, I believe it ran 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Okay, so whatever's open. I mean, I'm just saying, let's let's market our town yeah. on that I map without idea. detracting from the, the obvious okay. focal point. Yeah, then Tom's would chip in 20 bucks. I'm thinking of Tom's, muffins, adjustments. The dining. Yeah, yeah. The dining, maybe. I don't know if there are other. Yeah, the, the froth, the, the creamy is still open. Um, because this is a way to foster goodwill with them too, to, because we definitely, for the big event, want to be partnering with establishments in town. I think that's a great suggestion. I'll bring that to the committee. Well, are you like limiting this just to Waitley residents? Well, the tag sales would be at Waitley addresses. Right, but does it have to be a Waitley resident? I suppose if you wanted to have, you've got a friend who lives in Deerfield and you want to let them set up in your driveway, that we'd be happy. You know, we, we wouldn't know the difference. It's our map shows whatever your address is as the address. Okay, but. We're not going to have map including other communities. No, because the town of Deerfield is not going to waive their, <laughs> right. their fee right. for. Yeah. Right. So. But if somebody wanted to set up in Tom's hot dog parking lot, come from Springfield and you're selling jewelry and they wanted to open a table that day. We would have to figure out if, if, if we can do it within the constraints of the town bylaws. I mean, I don't know if somebody could set up a jewelry display in a parking lot. That's a different license. Yeah, that, well, that's... Well, we would apply for a permit here for a... a but it's a different license. You're selling, right. you're selling jewelry. Well, I use that example, whatever you want to sell. But I don't know if the permit guard sale, you have to say what you're selling on the permit. I don't, I don't, you don't say what you're selling, but I don't know if it goes beyond individual residences. And that's a question for Brian. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm happy to do that if the town 
laws let us do that, but we don't want to be, I mean, what we did last time was we had the central location where people could bring, every, bring things and set up booths, and we found it was just way too labor intensive for our little committee, given the amount of money it made. You could put, you know, fucking go on the farm stand on that now. They'll be open, I guarantee it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, you had some questions, Brian, about this and uh, being a uh, nonprofit. Sue and, I, Sue and I had a discussion before um, this afternoon. I'm comfortable with, with how it's being. Okay. Um, yeah, there's just some. There was just some questions that I had about in terms of the accounting. Um, I think the 501c3, which is really the 250th committee board, the overlap, I think, if we're doing it, if we're issuing the permit to them, I think it, it, it addresses the accounting issues that I have in terms of where revenue goes. Okay. So if, if somebody wasn't aware of the 250th and applied here for a garage sale permit, what would happen? Would you refer them to 250 or would we give them one and then give them one anyway? My thinking is they'd be given a choice. They can, you know, they, there, are, there are benefits to doing it through us and I would hope that the people in this building would make them aware of the benefits of doing it through us. It costs $5 more. $15 if you do it through the town, $20 through us. If you do it through us, you're on the you're on the map. Right. Yeah. I think we should actually encourage people to. to yeah, I, 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 think, I think that's fine. No, we can't make them, but yeah. You know, but you're, you're, I think you're, he's probably right that you can't deny if somebody really only wants to pay fifteen dollars and doesn't want to be on our stinking map. Yeah. That, they, they're not very smart yeah, business people. They do that. You know, there are actually, some they're very they, smart business people. There could be some. <laughs> Well, but the map, I think, I think the map is actually appealing. If you go to, if you go to the, the, the Brimfield thing, there, that map is like gold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, uh, I, I think. Uh, that, that and this could rival Brimfield. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. This is, what's the date again? Well, it's not September, September 7th. 7th. That's Saturday? Yes. It's always, always. This will be the second time we do it, the Saturday afternoon. Always. Days. Always. Yes, twice means always. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's Every what, time we've done it. Yeah, every single time. Okay. 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 Good. This is exciting. Great job. Yeah. So we're good to go? Yes. It's a yes. Thank you. Do we need to vote, Brian? Um, no, we just had to discuss, right? Or She's the chair, so she said, no, let's go. I, Next I, mean, I don't. Do, do you think we'll we need a vote? No. I, think right. we're, I think we're good. Um, I was thinking of moving. Um, I see Richard's waiting here anxiously to be appointed to the Cultural Council, so. Is um, that why you're here? Are they supposed to stay for that? <laughs> well, the question is, are you staying for that? Uh, is that yeah. what? You, is it, are you staying for that? I'm willing to. to are you just fascinated to by us? Fast forward to oh, that and then come back to the. Oh, the whole agenda. <laughs> oh man. So, so we're gonna, we're gonna, yeah, we're Dan, gonna, he's going to give you a run for your money, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Then let's let's stick with our uh, our the order uh, expressed in the agenda. Um, so next is discuss the status of the castrates establishment and review the police calls um, and sign the notices of decision from past meetings. So Jim, Hello. you're up. I did not actually make it through the whole call list. <laughs> not. It was, it was fast and I, I couldn't actually understand everything in all of the calls either. So I'm really happy to have your uh, translation services. Okay. Yeah. I was hoping for a summary of all this having one page I or something. Nine to four C means illegal drugs. I found this, 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 this is the summary. This the, is the quick summary. Individual, individual of the individual calls, yes. I found it very entertaining. That's right. Is it just a petition? Or how long is that for? Well, let's hear the, I, I, I might suggest that we get the cliff notes. Right, rather than go through each page, I don't think okay. they want to do that. So from September 18th to June, I did to June, um, up to the current date, <coughs> for the number of calls that we've had to Castleby's. So as you can see, this it's a pretty lengthy list of calls. Um, I highlighted on, on mine the calls that I gave you in the, the, the packet, the, the calls, but on the cover sheet, I've highlighted the, the specific calls. 
Um, so if you want to just, I mean, I can just go through the 13 that I had highlighted because um, those were the, really the only calls that I felt that were of really any importance. Some of them were alarm calls, um, motor vehicle violation, they just, the, it's a car that got stopped in front of there and they just used that as an address location for the stop. It had nothing to do with castaways. Um, building checks, that's our officers checking on the building when, when it's uh, closed for business. Um, again, like I said, alarm calls. So are these the 13 on the individual pages? Should yes. Or yeah. Is that more? yeah, I highlighted 13. There's more on the, the cover list that I gave. Everybody uh -huh. got that as well. So if we want to match, we can match the yeah. with this list. Yeah, which is 13, 13 of them on this list. So as you can see, the, okay. the ones okay. that are skipped on there are the, the okay. ones that are really. 13 sheets in this. <clears throat> yes. I got you. Um, and what is RP? Reporting party. Reporting uh, party. Yes. Yeah. And we need a little vocabulary. <laughs> Yeah, there's, okay. I've, I've cut out a lot of the stuff that's normally in the call because it, it gets so confusing. 13 in the what, nine month period you're talking? 13, yes. That's up from one, once a year. Well, you also, you also have to look at since last, and we, we talked about some calls since last uh, February yeah. when we went to the new record management system, which we're now connected to um, our dispatch center. So we have much much better records of, of actual calls that, that are happening, not just um, reports that we wrote. But it still doesn't include the state police actions. On, on this it does, because it shows that they're transferred to state police. Okay. Yeah, the which calls that were, which 99.9% .9 of those are um, the alarm calls that were transferred to state police. The accidental trip. Those are the owners tripping in. Yes, whether it's the owners tripping it coming in, or whether it's you know just an alarm going off at night, somebody left the door open and the wind blew the door open or something like that. There, were, there hasn't been any alarm calls where we went there in the last nine months. There hasn't been any alarm calls where we went there and somebody was actually flashing in. inside. Yeah, yeah breaking. So, uh, we have had in the past. We have had that, but not not anything on this list. But of the thirteen, are the state police involved in all thirteen of these? No. No, nope. the and ones just local. Your 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 office involved. Your yes, for the, all thirteen. How many Four. of them were state police? Involved? So five five, uh, five out of these pages are were handled by state police. Five of the thirteen to state police. Yes, if it wasn't no, transferred to state police. 13, we handled five of the whole page. five of the whole sheet. I'm asking of the thirteen. <coughs> Those are all ours. They were all yours. Yes, there's only five on that entire the sheet. That's really showing up for. Whoops, is at two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. So we, we, how do we know the okay. ones that are referred to state police are just whoopsies? Because there's no investigation that went along with that. There was and nothing, if there had been an investigation notes. that went along with it, where would that? The, the state police would have the record, but there would be notes in our log saying that there was something that happened. Well, there's some here that Okay, so maybe I don't understand what referred to the state police. I thought they have a different record management system than we have. I thought referred to the state police meant there wasn't anyone able to respond in Whiteley, therefore it got bounced to them. Yes. They responded and their records don't keep don't communicate with ours. So how would we know what happened on the state police? Well when they, when it gets transferred to the state police, the record of the call would uh, be held in the state police record. Yeah. But our dis if our dispatcher transferred it to them, they would have to call our dispatch center and let them know we've gotten there, we've cleared there. They're going to do the report on their system, but they would still tell our dispatch center because the call came in from them. So they give a what summary happened. to the dispatcher? And they we would. get that summary? They would, yes. And we get the summary? It, it, if it gets entered in by the dispatcher. So if there so, was something okay. that happened. There's, you know, there's, a, there's a lot of little dots to connect there, and I'm seeing lots of dots that could fail. Like you said, oh well, they, if they call and if they give them a summary and if they put the summary into some other system, it seems like the the ones that get referred to state police are not necessarily all. Like the loop doesn't really seem to close. I don't have confidence from what you're telling me that loop gets closed. Calling. It, it's the ones that are transferred to the state police as an alarm call that came in at four o'clock in the morning. But they went there okay, and checked. If nothing it were happened. not an alarm call, we would know about it. How? That's what you haven't convinced me yet. Because one, one, it would be in our log that there's an additional investigation, and I would 
be in contact with the state police. So how does that law out. get in? How does that that notation get into your log? This, by the the person responding to the call would notify our dispatcher. So what the, the state police were are required final. to to notify the dispatcher. Well, it's it's common practice. I mean, there's no law that says they have to do it. I mean, they okay, can, they can call okay, their so desk. Okay, so it's their practice or their policy. Yeah. So if they if it's anything other than a oh well they if it if it was something they, more than an oops we would know about it we would know about it because I would get a, a copy of the log from the from the lieutenant down at the state police barracks who I've, I've talked to and we we okay the but yeah because earlier what know. I thought what I thought I heard you say was that they have to call the dispatcher the dispatcher may or may not put that information into a log if they call the dispatcher the information gets put into the log. If they don't oh, okay. call the information, the, the dispatcher, they don't put anything in the law. Okay, so the only way a state police uh, referred one becomes a, it, that is not an oops would be missed is if that call isn't made. And then we'd have really good reason to be pissed because they're not following their own policy or rule, whatever the right word is. Yes, or, or but now we, now we have good communication with the state police, so if there was something major that happens, I, I get, okay. I get gotcha. texts all the time with copies of their log that show me that, hey, we had an incident here, we had an incident here at 2 okay. o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning. Right. We yeah. didn't always have that, but we, we have that okay. relationship. Now I understand. Now. Yes. Okay. So, um, so I don't know if you, you want to go through these individually. I mean, they're... I'm <clears> only <throat> curious about things that were... that that in your opinion you know the the resulted in arrest like i see one suspect was arrested for oui after pursuit i mean if it, if it resulted in action yep that's what i'm interested in if it was just like all right don't do that anymore which is 99 percent yeah i mean if you read through them yeah you can read through the the last the last piece on each page is the narrative from the officer that responded their their narrative as to what what happened so the first one was the argument between um, nail parties regarding mutual friends who work at the club. Um, the other half was gone prior to arrival. So there was, there was nothing that came with that, nothing that happened. One of the parties involved in the argument was gone, so there's no argument anymore. Peace restored. Um, so that's, that's the first one on, on the list. So those are the types of things that, that you're going to see looking at the narrative. Um, there, there's one that talks about uh, CPR being being provided by some random person. Um, does the the South County EMS come into play here? Yes. Yep. They responded, treated and transported that individual. So typically, with medical medical related medical treatment stuff, a lot of that doesn't go into a, a public law for HIPAA protection and things like that. Privacy privacy issues. Um, wouldn't see that type of stuff. It's not normal for an officer to put every single thing in there, unless it was something something major that they ended up doing a, a complete report on it, then it might be in the narrative there that we can redact things. But um, just the, the quick narrative. The only one, the only other one that caught my eye was the, the one where somebody was repeating, was reporting physical and sexual assault. Yes, that's yeah. the one I want to know. Is that an employee, or is that a patron, or is that somebody's girlfriend, or what's going on? And it's been redacted. Yeah, it, it is an employee because it's been redacted because it's ongoing. Okay. Um, ongoing in the sense where the the person called our dispatch center, they referred them to us and state police. That person hasn't followed up with that. We've attempted to contact that person, and they're not responding. So it's technically still open because we haven't gotten any information from a victim in order to investigate it so was that taking place on premises yes that's a real problem mm -hmm. what's your lens say is that going to go to court or what, what's, what's going to happen with this um honestly my guess probably nothing why not um well the victim hasn't reached back out to us they, they haven't been in contact with us to- We don't have a special victims unit. Continue on in. an investigation. I mean, we, we can only do so much. We but can't force a victim she, to give us a statement so we can charge- Has she contacted the state police or you don't know? 
I haven't heard of any notifications from anybody that um, she's notified anyone else at this Cause, point. Because as you recall, and, and again, the reason that, I mean, there are a lot of reasons why obviously this one <coughs> jumps out. Mm -hmm. But it's something that we discussed repeatedly when last summer. Yeah. And when someone says, well, there are no sexual assaults in our prison. They were lying. I mean, it hadn't happened yet, but it has had, this is not a snapshot in time thing. But yeah. So, I mean, you, and, it could happen five times tomorrow, and it could, couldn't happen right. for five years. And it's such an underreported sort of thing. Right. And, mm -hmm. and you know, the, the, this person's probably under you know, tremendous amount of pressure to just shut up. I don't, I don't believe yeah. that person is still employed there. I think they left and moved on to other things and they're probably just putting it behind them that's that's my guess like, it's only speculation because i haven't yeah. so, so how many like assaults were not were not even reported yeah. um, right you can say that anywhere now. yeah right right uh, well no there's, you got one reported of, then there's tons of things that, yeah. that don't get reported then yeah I agree. One, for one reason yeah but, but but yeah. it's not physical and sexual assault it, well, it, sorry we have to put up a, a, a warning before this you know, disturbing things maybe on this meeting's agenda um, that you know I, I yeah I guess I, I'm really uncomfortable with that um, and I understand that it's there might be limits to what you can do about it but it's a this is a big problem I, I agree Is that really the, the only significant one of all the 13? Are you saying? Tire slashing. Uh, there's uh, a yeah. there's broken <coughs> property, there's a the, the one that shouldn't be in here is that, no, I, I'm complaining because an old manager is lying to staff. I'm not sure that it's... <laughs> it, it's we get the list of yeah, I know that we get called there. Right. Um, a couple of the things that if you want, I can because Jonathan mentioned one and one that was just mentioned, there was a, um, a group of women that were at the establishment drinking. One of the women was shut off essentially, can't drink anymore because she was too intoxicated at that point. So in my opinion, she should have been cut off much earlier than she was um, to the point where that individual left, her friends kind of she left the establishment, she was told to leave, so she kind of wandered the neighborhood and ended up breaking, or attempting to break into somebody's somebody's house nearby. So that was that was one of the ones that so was So with the shoes left mentioned. in the snow? Yes. Okay. Yeah. How does this compare to other locations in town? Other establishments, other, other establishments businesses? That you had calls on, either number of calls or, or type of calls? Or <coughs> Um, well, other establishments that serve alcohol? Yeah, yeah. like the diner. Sure. Yeah. The diner, the Waitley Inn, the Waitley yeah. Inn Tom's. Colony Motel. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they don't, they don't serve alcohol there. But, but anybody that serves yeah, alcohol, we, we don't have these nearly these issues with any other establishment that serves alcohol. I, I, I can't think off the top of my head of, of any of them that we've had really any issues with. And, and one thing you, you said that uh, you said this person should have been cut off long before. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that is, I don't know if this is the right word, actionable? I mean, it, it sounds like that bartender may not be following the rules. For, mm -hmm. and, and is that something that there might be appropriate action for either us or for you to take? I don't really the, the only, know. The only action would be able to come from you. There's no law that I could charge them with something like that. Yeah, because I, I didn't read in here that you thought she should have been cut off a lot earlier. Yeah. So that's not documented, at least not in writing at this point. Yeah. <clears throat> so it'd be really hard for me to take action on that as it's not in writing. Mm -hmm. And so. Uh, if we're the ones who can take action, but we're not really getting the information that we might need to take action on, I wonder. Like, I wonder how that. Like, like could could those kinds of, of things be put in the reports so that there, there's a complete report 
about well, that is a these, these are all the synopsis. Oh, yeah. so there's a, there is a complete report. There is a complete on report. That. The, the lengthy investigation, property damage, restitution. There's there's a lot more to okay. that case. Than are, just, are you willing just, to flag those? And because I mean, it sounds like a liquor license violation to me. Mm -hmm. um, so when you think there is a liquor license violation, uh, mm -hmm. would you be willing to bring that to our attention? No matter what day of the weekend is, yeah. if it's a I've, I've day. been. I don't think I've been forwarding all the reports, but I have been notifying uh, Brian when we have incidents that, that come up. I'm not sure if anything. Is George is right. We need to have liquor license violations because we are the licensing authority. We should be made aware of this, and then we can choose to say, you know what, one instance, or let's. We we need to see trend because that's going to be the trend line. Yeah. Yes. This is really the one that triggered. The, yeah. The oh, okay. Dive into. Because I, I was just trying to scan through here and get the date on that one. Well, right, because of the breaking and entering and all yeah, that. Kind of right. but, but the people managing it there today, or the bartenders, or bouncers, or security, or whatever you have that are there today, are they, or do we know if they're going to continue with the new owner, or is it going to be complete new? I don't. I don't know. Yeah, so because it's all these complaints are you could say are from the old owner, they're, they're not on yeah, the new. Well, they are. Yeah, yeah. Right, they're on the old owner. Yeah, they, so yeah. the whether they continue old. or not with uh, with the new owners, or if there's new people there, we have yeah. no idea. We've we've been insured through the, the meetings that there's going to be a higher level higher level of training, that there's going to be more security, more right. staff. Right. Who knows? Yeah. Right. What are our requirements now? I guess the entertainment or the alcohol license required. Uh, uh, duty officer there for yes. certain hours of the day. That's not happening today. No, because right. they haven't taken over ownership yet. Right. Okay, so during them hours, how many of these would have been? These 13 would occur during the hours that you have a duty officer there. Um, um, do you have any idea? We'd have to go through, probably one probably through the times. Yeah, to go we'd have to go through each one. Yeah. Yeah. Day, but I mean, there's still going to be disturbances. People are still yeah. going to get in fights. Yeah. There's still going to be stuff that happens in the parking lot. There's still going to be unwanted people. There's still going to be the person that, okay, you're cut off, you got to go. And they say, no, I'm not leaving. I want another beer. No, you got to go. And then right. they, that's still an unwanted yeah. person. So I guess the, I mean, the, <clears> the part that concerns me, and I know this is kind of new ground for us because mm -hmm. we have really um, they have been as close as we really should um, is that this is this is from February this is late February granted but that's like all of March all of April all of May and now we're into June so it's almost say through call it three and a half months um, before I learned of this now maybe that's on me and I should be calling more often but I sort of feel like if you thought there was a liquor license violation back in February, maybe not on February 23rd, but within the, the, the days following. Um, I'd want to know sooner than three and a half months later mm -hmm. because it's harder to to take action now. Um, that's so. So I guess I, I'm I'm open to whatever mechanisms you think are are best to do this, but I really like a faster turnaround on things like that. I think that's. Uh, I mean, and, 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 if you want me to forward it directly to you, we can. I can certainly do that. Uh, well, I think it should go through Brian or whatever you get. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I, I think, think Brian is keeping us. central here. So. I, I think. I think. I think we did one about this. Fairly close to this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Um, right. Yeah. But we, when you say we, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think. I'm not sure. I, I'm part of the we. Yeah. I, I think, and I, I don't know for for certain, but. I, I thought I had sent out an email related to this, um, and then we'd asked, we had sent out the logs, and then we were asking Jim to get us the uh, the more yeah. uh, more information on I think about 13 of these, yeah. um, and that took a little time. So. But you did do it earlier in the year, send us one or two of these. Yeah, the this, this, that this happened, was the so. one that that sort of triggered the yeah. the request for additional information. So it's not like we didn't know Jim. until June of this year, but. Well, I didn't know about this until June of this year. Well, I mean, I, certainly I not know any specific of this that one, but I know specifically yeah. Brian sent us at least twice information. Right, but something like this doesn't say sexual assault anywhere oh, okay. on it. You know, if I get a, a, a list of calls, I, I know the frequency, yeah. and I can have 
uh, some idea of which ones are oops, but none of these say sexual assault. None of these say you know, liquor license violation. Sure. Uh, to me, that, that's important information. Yeah. Um, and sometimes reports are made to not necessarily make information really available. Sometimes reports are made so that you can say a report was made but not really deliver the information that's needed. So that's all I'm saying. I think we need yeah, to- no, there's, there's many different ways to provide the information. This is just, this is just the, the kind of the generic list of the, the call types and then you've got the right. summary and then you've got a more detailed summary, and then you may have a report. But, but, but we wouldn't have yeah. a report if it was the you know the reported incident, uh, because we we were never notified of it. Um, she was advised to contact us. No, no, I, no, I understand. There but, wouldn't uh, be a report necessarily. So, right. but this, I think this narr this uh, narrative that I gave to you, you guys tonight, uh -huh. that's probably more detailed than, than just getting this. Oh, so something like this is. I actually right. What's in your left hand? Yes. Yep. So forwarding that information, I can I certainly do that. Yeah. And, 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 you can, and I can do it electronically, yeah. so it get emailed out. But even this, this didn't <clears> have the. There, there was no flag on this that that should have been a liquor license violation. I, I would not have, from reading that, known that the person was cut off. That's not in here. Uh, a lot of details are missing from this, and the details that are actually pertinent to us. So I don't, I don't think there's a conspiracy for people to keep the information, from us, but we need to find a way to get the information uh, that's, when something important like that happens, to, to get the information to us. Okay, I think. And, and I see Susan's hand, Susan's being really patient, but let these guys go first. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Susan, you wanna go ahead? Yeah, I wanna ask the board, assuming you can identify liquor license violations, criminal activity, et cetera, as a, you know, what is our tolerance for that? How many of these events do we allow to show up in the report before we pull the license? I, we don't have a precedent for that because we haven't probably kept records as well as we should have. So should we have a target in mind, yeah, in I, fact, to, to play fair with them and put them on warning? I, I, I know that in the past, and I don't think it's been often, but they have had their liquor license suspended for a small X number of days in the past. I don't think it's happened frequently, but I do know that that has come to our attention in the past, that, that for whatever infraction, yeah. their, their liquor license has been suspended. And it's, it's, it's going to either be serving a minor or serving someone who's too intoxicated on, on most, right. in most cases. Because had we known about Those this. are ABCC violations. Right. They're the ones that would suspend in those situations. In, in with well, actually, something to my, I was, I've been at selectmen's meetings, not in this town, but in other towns, where it was selling to a minor, it was an ABCC infraction, and the select board put the suspension in. Yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah. But I think the ones he's talking about were ABCC in the past, suspensions. Yes. The ABCC the suspensions. suspensions. They, they're, they're the ones right. that did the right. suspension. Right, right, right. But not that you Yeah, you, oh, you okay. can do it, yeah. Okay. Well, but, but, but we can't do it if we don't know about it. Yep. And no, it I seems guess. like three and a half yeah. months later, is a little bit too late to say, oh, you did this thing long ago, and well, we're gonna slap you on the wrist now. Okay. <clears throat> but we should perhaps have a discussion about a policy in terms of, you know, I don't want to, you don't want to do a car blanche, three strips, and you're not, because we've seen how that doesn't work in so many That's different right. ways, but yeah. we should have some guidelines written for what our tolerance is for this kind of stuff. And that's fair to the business owner. Request, too. You can certainly request hearings with the license holder as well. It, if I own a the business, I want to know what the exactly. town's tolerance is for this so I can be extra <clears throat> careful with my compliance. If I know that I'm going to lose my business, I want to know that. So that's in the best interest of the business owner and the, and the town itself. No, I, I just think we're getting too Right. Too restrictive well, here, yeah. and, and we're going to have to come down to well, does that mean one or none or or none over one month period? Well, that's why I'm saying we need to have guidelines created. Well, I, I think it's might not too be early, able... too early to decide all that. Why don't we just see what happens? Because that's what. Well, I think we can we decide have to... anytime we want to change the license. Can we to pull the license or restrict it or suspend it? Why do we have to have a criteria written down to say if this happens, now we can suspend it? 
Why do you need to do that? Because right now, I feel like we should have suspended their license on February 24th. But we don't have a system in place for us to have the information that there was a violation so that we could act. Okay, but... Uh, and, and that, okay, I'm just, I'm telling you why. You asked a question. Okay. And I'm telling you why. If we had a discussion in advance and we had all agreed that any liquor license violation means automatically you're suspended for a week, I think that would send the message. And okay. that would mean when we get to that point, we say, sorry, you're suspended for a week. And we also don't want it to be arbitrary. And, and, and we don't want right. it to be arbitrary and capricious. And, it's a, and so it's not a bad idea to have. I don't know that one week suspension for any particular violation. I, I might want to know what has been done in other towns. I don't know if I have the information about that policy off the top of my head now. But it might be something to put on uh, agenda for the next or the next meeting so that we actually, I mean, while we're improving this communication line, that we actually have some expectations about what consequences will be when there's violations like that. I mean, I, I think that's not an unreasonable thing to do. We don't have to do it tonight. Right, no, we shouldn't do it tonight. We so don't have no, information. Do so I think, so I, obviously, the minimum due process that's due to license holders is that there would be notice in uh, a public hearing before any action could be taken. Yeah. That and that board. can happen so, at the, like the next selectman's meeting after we have the Right. So, so it may not be that the, that the, that the policy is we'll, we'll suspend them for X number of days. It will be if there's a liquor license violation suspected, we will hold a public hearing. I mean, that sort of seems should be like the basic policy of if we get information from the police that says we think there may be a violation, then we're going to hold we would have a hearing. But here are the guidelines that we will utilize in that hearing. To, and I think we should have a conversation with with ABCC because they're very good at this obviously we should talk to a, a, a adjacent towns to see what their policies are um, I, I just think this needs some due diligence but it should apply to all businesses yeah, of course that have licenses yeah, of course. Guys. Of course. Right. it doesn't apply to well. every, every single month liquor license there's no every reason licensee. well yeah. what does the liquor license say now is, is there a viol what does it say about violations what do you the license wouldn't say have anything. Does the license now say anything about if there's a violation, we can suspend them? Or well, you have rules and regulations, but but state the state regulations allow you to suspend them. Okay, so what? I, I'm still not and sure. Then, what what are we, what are, what are we are we going to specify? Is something more more specific than the state regulations? I, you Maybe. say we have a we, we're going to have a public hearing if, if if there is a violation, and depending on on the violation and information we get from the chief to decide the action to take, and it would be a public hearing. Uh, isn't that kind of common knowledge that that's going to happen? What what else are we are we saying we're going to do? Automatically suspend them if that happens? Can I, can I make a suggestion that we're having this conversation without data? Yeah. And, and let's let's schedule something soon. Let's do a little due diligence in terms of what other towns do. Maybe at the meeting where we discuss this, we have someone from the uh, from the state licensing authority come out, or at least give us some written guidance, so we're not just running blind. Because I think it is something that we should have in writing. And again, I believe that's in the best interest of of owners, so they understand in black and white what the consequences are for not paying attention to the laws. Then, yeah, then we have to follow through. Yes, exactly. And so I think this is a good start, that, 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 that our chief is giving us these information. Yes, a couple of them should have a little bit more detail, perhaps. Um, your opinion of this person should, should have probably been shut off sooner is a very important piece of information. Yeah. But we need to, we need to create, we need to continue to improve the communications, and we need to have something written in terms of guidelines. But we're not going to do anything sitting here, the three of us, right now. Okay. okay. But let's put this on a future agenda with yes. the, just a little more information, if we can yeah. kind of keep pushing on that because, I mean, it's going to happen again. It's, and, in all likelihood. And by the way, Fred, to answer your question, I just glanced at it. A third of the calls were during the dinner hour. 
Um, a third of the calls were one o'clock in the afternoon, and a third of the calls were probably between nine and eleven thirty. That, and I'm generalizing there a lot, but that's that was my quick thumbnail. So ha when that person is on duty, I think we will see a reduction in these types of events. That's on the complete list you looked at. I looked at. Not the 13. No, I looked at this. Of the 13? Oh, okay. Of the 13. Of the 13. Oh, 13. Okay. Of the 13 that are in the main, because a lot of these things are just, ones. you know, the, right. they, you know, they, okay. they set off the alarm all the time. I just yeah. said, okay. Okay. All right. I just want to pass, pass those notices. Oh, so these yeah. notices can be just to be signed. All right, on to new business. <clears throat> Item A, discuss results of the alcohol and tobacco Thank compliance you, Susan. checks. Yeah. For calendar year 2019. And you'll have to explain to me more about what those are. That's but this is so, yeah. kind of a good segue into, yeah. into the compliance checks because an establishment, not not the castaways. We uh -huh. we do annual compliance checks for tobacco and alcohol. Uh -huh. So we send uh, somebody underage in to attempt to buy um, tobacco products, and we send somebody into the establishments to attempt to purchase alcoholic beverages to see if if people are if employees are carding people like they're supposed to and you know not serving somebody or not um, not selling to somebody that's underage so i provided the two one for the alcohol one for the tobacco the tobacco compliance checks that we did um, everybody cleared those um, the Alcohol compliance checks, we had one establishment that did serve to somewhere, someone under 21, not serve to them, but uh, sold them alcohol. Are you allowed uh, to alcohol. say which institution? Uh, it, it's on the list. Oh, sorry, that's on the list. Uh, yes. I, I, I'm gonna suggest, that's, yes, uh, I'm gonna suggest that we have the entity that um, did not pass the compliance check um, come in for a conversation and discuss what steps they are taking so that it doesn't happen again. Um, that, that I, it sounds like a public hearing. Right. That's or I think just, I don't know, is it a hearing or is it just a meeting, uh, some, an agenda item here? Well, if, you, if, if the board wishes to take action against a license, so to revoke a license or suspend a license, it, it needs to be it needs to be a public hearing or termed a disciplinary hearing at which the, the licensee has an opportunity to give its side of the story and present evidence as to why the board shouldn't take action against the license. So if you're contemplating taking action against the license, then then it should be properly noticed as a, as a disciplinary hearing. If not, then it could be I, less than that. I think we should have a hearing. But we don't have to impose discipline if we choose not to. Right. Right, correct. We have but if we're going to have that option, yeah. we would need to right. properly notice it as a hearing. Yeah, the role of the board would be would be to would be to um, take the information from um, from the in, in most cases it's gonna be a police report or something like that. And listen to what the listen to the defense, so to speak, of the of the of the license holder, and then make a determination based on based on the information before you as to whether you think it warrants any action taken or not. Would this be a hearing after a select board meeting, before a select board meeting, or on a separate day? Um, it could be whatever whatever the wish of the board is. It could be during a meeting, right? Yeah, our meetings get. Lengthy with our own business as it is. Yeah. So, but I mean, it doesn't have to be a long hearing. But I, I would be interested in hearing what they have to say. And, yeah. and what steps they're taking right. unilaterally, yeah. let, yeah. let alone what, what we have they to do. Can they document any of that? Can, um, I think asking them to come and have the hearing kind of sends a message that we're serious about it. Yeah. I don't. I don't think we're just serious about the alcohol license and the castaways. I think we're serious about all of our alcohol right. licenses. And I, and I want to be firm, but I also want to be understanding that people are human, and people make mistakes. Yeah. yeah. Because we all do. Okay. Can we set that up? Yes. 
I'll coordinate that. All right. It's getting late. What did we decide about about the the previous establishment that we talked about? Gasways. What do you mean? Oh, is there, is there any subsequent meetings that we're going to have on? I don't know. How, how do we want to approach that? Oh yeah. If we we have, uh, what documentation do we have of the uh, your opinion that the person should have been cut off earlier? Uh, it wasn't my investigation. So there's not going to be anything in the report about my opinion because I didn't write a report uh, on it. Uh, is there just, anyone else who's got them? It's just going to be the officer that responded to the call. And will they have said anything about it? But they can. Yeah. I mean, if, if you wanted to bring them in. Was it one of our officers or was yes. it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, if you wanted to bring them in to, to talk about it. And, and I mean, I, I am reacting to you, what you expressed <clears throat> as your opinion on that. I, I, I'm thinking of it more in general terms, if somebody is so intoxicated that you have to shut them off, it seems to me that they should have already been shut off. They should recognize that sooner. Whether it's a training issue, whether they have safe serve certifications, I'm not sure. I, I don't know what, what they're doing. I, I don't have any of that information. But it shouldn't, at any establishment, it shouldn't get to the point where a person is so intoxicated where they have to be asked to leave. And that's why you're shutting them off. And then they go break into somebody's house. Yeah. It seems it seems to me that that's that's a little bit a little bit more. And again, it's just just my opinion. Um, but it seems to me like they're supposed to be trained. They're supposed to recognize. I mean, if somebody's and I don't know. I'm just this is hypothetical. If somebody's at the establishment for six hours and they've been drinking for all of those six hours, they should probably, you know, somebody should recognize that maybe they shouldn't be there. For that long. So it's just something like that. It's it's not just this specific incident. That was that was my opinion based on that. If somebody is so intoxicated that they're going to wander around in the snow with no shoes on and attempt to break into somebody's house, it seems that somebody should have recognized that they were. They but were sometimes when you shut somebody, as a former bartender. <clears throat> I like to believe that I shut somebody off right at the time. They, they, you're, you've had three beers in the last two hours, whatever whatever it was. Yep. I'm <clears> shutting <throat> you off. You don't have to demonstrate intoxication it, it, to that's be shut exactly off. That's exactly my point. Okay. That's exactly then, my point. Then it, just, it sounds like if, if we're going to be even-handed about it, then we should be we should do it the same for for that incident. Um, now that it's brought to our attention. And you'd have the opportunity to ask questions. And we'd have the opportunity to ask questions. That's going on. Yeah. And I can certainly have the uh, the responding officer be here as well, yeah, so that you can, would be, he can speak to uh, any opinions that he might have. Based of course, on this is also the reason why we should do it sooner because the memory banks get cloudy because people are busy, and having that conversation two weeks after the fact, the the memories are going to be a lot clearer than absolutely three months later. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Now, now, it's it's time. Time. now I would like to. Uh, <laughs> time has been no, I would like to nominate Richard Pesky to uh, the Whitley Cultural Council. Second. Uh, all in favor? All right. Aye. Do you want to take the front seat? No. Okay. Speech. Congratulations. Very good. Paul. I would have brought a tie. And, Oh, yeah, well, that, we, we all wear Star Wars t-shirts. Yeah, you have to swear Pardon? You have to come in and swear at Lynn. Swear at Lynn? I'll do that. And we'll send you an appointment letter. Okay. But Lynn's not, Lynn's going to be on, Lynn's on vacation for Right, right. so it's going to be jamming. My, my, my only question is to make sure that I follow through on understanding how to, how to be an effective member. I don't really know a great deal about it. I mean, I'm familiar with how it basically works and what the requirements are. I'd like to follow up on understanding a little bit more. I understand that it's uh -huh. um, heavier during the springtime, isn't it? More no, in the fall. In the fall? In the fall yeah. yeah, there's more work involved in the fall, which is fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the very brief uh, synopsis is uh, people who want to get a grant from the Cultural Council normally have to have their grants in by October 15th, and it's submitted electronically to the state's uh, Cultural Council website. Uh, and then there's a period of time between October 15th and I think December 31st when we have to meet 
once, twice, three times, whatever it takes to uh, kind of rank those and decide uh, how much money to give each grant um, based on whatever criteria we, we want, essentially, as long as they're reasonable uh, things. Like, so we can decide we want to focus on seniors, or we want to focus on students, or we want to focus on. We, we've got a lot of leeway on what we as a group have to decide. Um, and then the other the rest of the work is sending letters to people who, who don't get money, sending letters to people who do get money. And there's rules about when those have to happen and then they send in paperwork as they do the projects and we sign more things and they get paid. So it's pretty, but most of it is those meetings where we're deciding um, uh, which grants we want to fund and which ones yeah, we don't. Yes, yes. I think uh, Lynn will get enough contact information so that when we get ready, probably sometime in September, October, some heads up, okay. emails will go out. And you'll hear from the chair, though. Yeah. I'm sorry. You'll hear from the chair of the council. I don't so, want to sign that. So I have no for more information. Okay. Yeah, no, you, you can sign I have all your information. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I'd like sorry. to make a motion to appoint Brandon Iavecchia. Are you ready to do that? Yeah, right. No, that's good. Is yes. Yeah, we did. We did have uh, an interview. Finally, background check. So all of that's been completed. Yes. Okay. And I do have a uh, copy of those resume. Okay. Uh, I'll second the nomination. Uh, that's why we trust you. Okay. Question. Uh, this, this is entertainment license choice. I want to sign it. Do we want to sign? Why? Why not? I did. Uh, I abstained from the vote. She abstained so from the vote. You guys oh, voted back back in the day. And I abstained. So yeah, I mean, do we, we want to sign now, or are we waiting for more information? I guess it's me and you. No, because we. This is what we passed. Correct. Right. So yeah, we signed. You already voted oh, in okay, favor okay, of it. Right. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know whether. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we signed it. Okay. That's the reason we. The reason we waited to. <clears throat> For town council, the council decision was we weren't sure what was going to happen with the transfer of the license and the sale. But now that it's yeah. more certain, it's okay. it was worth okay. having it done. Is that all the guidelines that will be done? Yeah. yeah. And, and those will be sent. Those will be sent to um, to the proposed owners, the new owners of the uh, of the establishment. Um, but we're still not. Hold, we're still going to hold off on signing the actual licenses until we know that the sales. We don't want dual dual licenses or issuing a license to somebody who doesn't own the establishment. Okay. All right. Um, last item before town administrator updates is the uh, report from the UMass Clean Energy Corps on the Wayne Elementary School. I did not get a chance to read through this, um, and I don't know if this is. I mean, it's getting late. Um, is this something that we can do quickly tonight, do you think, Brian? Um, I mean, I can give you a quick summary. I, I think it, it would be good if it can get sent to a committee, maybe the okay. Energy Committee. <coughs> that they are familiar with our past work on the uh, that, school. That might have some, um, some expertise in looking into suggestions. I mean, they're really suggesting uh, four things to improve the energy efficiency of the, of the elementary Thank school. You. Good night, Sam. Um, one is installing air barriers at the ceiling level. The other one's adding heat recovery to the existing ventilation systems. Um, adding a new modulating condensing boiler to heat the building um, and keeping the existing boiler for uh, redundancy and incorporating variable frequency drives on the hydraulic pumps and the ventilation fans. I kind of know what that means. For a lot of these, but I don't know what some of these things mean. I think there's some people on energy committees yeah. that probably do. Um, I think the people on the energy committee are familiar with the past work that's been done at the school with you know from back when Siemens. Yeah. Um, so I think the energy committee might be the right place to yeah. to think, send this for some opinions. Yeah, I think we should kick the energy committee, and the three of us should digest it, obviously ourselves. Yeah. But yeah. I don't think we need to discuss it at any length tonight. Yep. Should we, at some point, either after Energy Committee looks at it, have a presentation by the authors here, a quick summary of this? For not only us, but for the, for the um, public here, what's 
I think that's a possibility. Yeah. I, I yeah. think I would rely on, on the Energy Committee and see what their... I'll see what we say. Yeah. What their recommendations are. Yeah, okay. Um, the Energy but Committee or this is, this is really right up the green communities alley, so to speak, in yeah. terms of grants. Yeah. And the, those grant those grant applications are usually due in December or January. So if we could have, if somebody want to go forward with this, if we could tee this up, um, yeah. it's yeah. a realistic chance to get these items done and paid for by somebody else. Yeah. And there seems to be significant cost savings associated with them and, and fairly uh, quick paybacks. But, um, Has this gone to the school committee? Or? I no, forwarded, well, yeah. I forwarded it to right. the school but, committee. But, but let's have the energy committee. Administration. Yeah. Yeah. Let's have them take the first bite, so yeah. to speak. Okay. 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 Administrator updates. How many do you have? Um, 11. <laughs> When's the game gonna end? Well, no. I. When's it, how many First do you have? Let's go fast. How about four? I just guessed four. Quick ones. Um, new pro. They gave us the notice to quit the the backspace. Well, they want to take back their notice and they want oh. to continue using the space. Oh. So I just wanted to check with you guys. Double the rent. Okay. So, Good. I think that's okay. Good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, I met with uh, Mike Rosenberg from EverSource. He was the gentleman who came with Melissa to. And they're making good faith effort to hear us. Um, they'll hopefully get us a map with all the proposed improvements, and they're trying to, I can't say it's on TV, but get their stuff in order. Well, you um, can say that. It's cable, <laughs> it's not FCC. Oh, right good. Um, to get their ducks in a row. Poop ducks in a row. Poop in a group. Yeah, that too. Um, so he was going to get back to me. I think he's going to try to get back by the end of this week. Um, and we could. Um, hopefully for the regulator banks what they were what they were hoping to be able to do and I think what the board was requesting is that we have these pre public these pre poll hearing site visits or field viewings whatever we want to call it and there's there's five or six applications that I've seen mm -hmm. um, so it may just be take an hour and yeah. we just go visit these locations like like we did last time and then Move forward, but yeah, that seemed to be. Do you think we need the full board, or is that something that we, uh, if one of us were available to do that site visit and could report back to the rest of the board? Um, would that I, 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 I think you guys said about that. Why don't we just leave it open? Whoever wants to, whoever look. wants to can come. Yeah. We don't need the full board, right? Yeah, okay, wants to come look. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing that, that, that we talked about is the, the notice that goes out. We, yeah. They didn't have an answer, but I, I stressed to them that a butter notification is ex is extremely important, and we need to fix that, or else I don't I don't I didn't say or else, but yeah, um, I don't think the board was comfortable moving moving these forward without adequate notice to butters. Um, I sent a letter to um, oh I sent an email. This was 2019. I sent an email to Nexamp um, to the project manager, um, suggesting that their trees are dead and that they should be paving their driveway apron because they promised that they would. Uh, the trees should be replanted in the next two to three weeks, I think he said. Um, and they're waiting for, uh, and they're still gonna pay the driveway apron, but they were they still need to do a little bit of work in that area. Um, so that should eventually get paid, but those trees are dead as doornails. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like a dump. Yeah. Um, comment on, on that. That site, I, I heard from some neighbors, people in town, that uh, the the screening for for there for the fence is marginal compared to what they're doing at the other site. That's what you were just talking about. No, no, not not the, the trees, the fence. not the trees. The wooden fence, the the wooden slats in uh, the chain link fence fired. is is all around the the one proposed uh, near the blue school, whereas the other one, it's only the front. I, I don't know what was approved by a planning board, and site plan review, but I, I think uh, maybe message should get back to them that that uh, that should be considered to, to provide screening on, on at least three of the sides there, or more screening than what's there, just in the front. Yeah, I can look and see what the what the site plan shows. If it if it doesn't show it's required, it would be sort of 
making the request that right. We're making the community neighbors isn't a bad thing. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, one other thing I wanted to talk about, and it may be it may be a bigger discussion, more discussion we have next time, but um, I have two other applications from from Paul Newland for concerts to be held at the Whitley Town Hall, one on July 31st and one on August 30th. Um, so those are these have been submitted, I guess, and I, I think uh -huh. he's he's planning to go forward with these. Um, As he should. Yeah, I, I don't have any okay. objection to. To, any, unless there's something that uh, that alerted you that there might be, um, like the, I, we just got to be careful that we don't get to a frequency of the of of this use that it that it somehow uh, changes. Okay. Other things that have been discussed in other meetings, um, about like so one, to speak. Yeah, but um, but it, it sounds like once per month during the height of the season yeah it seems like there's we're in this foggy gray area of yeah. grandfather use and what right. mean and so yeah. i just wanted to just get your lesson yeah. for these because i guess what my concern i I've had is some people have said this to me is is not so much he's holding the events there but uh, 200 now up to 200 people charging a uh, charging a fee. What's happening with that money? Is any of that going to to the town, the cultural council, or is it all going to this supposed 501c3? To him, uh, uh, how do we know what's for, happening with that for money? What, it's not a supposed 501c3. It is an actual 501c3. Okay, but but what's but, which means it's it's a nonprofit. Okay, but what's okay. happening? And, uh, you can ask Paul yourself if you want uh, accounting. I don't think he has to give a public accounting of his books. That's actually all. You have to do yearly filings, and those are open to the public. Right. Okay. But there's a fee to use the building, which he has to pay. So yes, so money is going to the money is going to the town as per our our policy. Right. Okay. So yes, money is going to the town. Uh, yes, money is going to the nonprofit, but the nonprofit has costs. And my understanding is Paul personally makes nothing off of this. And that wow. any money over costs goes to the artists. And that would show up in his filings. So that would be the way to go about it properly rather than to just kind of say, well, we don't know where all this is going. Well, if we can find out, and I, I think it's a legitimate 501c3, and I, I don't think, uh, you know, people who are saying those things are just not well informed. Well, I, I guess, I hear what you're saying, but it, it doesn't answer the, the question people are asking me, what are they doing with the, with all that money that he's collecting, well, every they're day. giving it. I just money. told you. So I know. What, I know what you said, but it, it's right. third hand, and fourth hand information. It, it, that well, then go so to the. It's no different than. It's no different than. Uh, than it, it, what if the American Red Cross did it? The money would go to the American Red Cross. And, and also, a one C three. After we receive our pilot from the solar farms, we don't ask where's the rest of the money coming. Where's all that money they're charging for the electricity coming to? I mean, it's, you know? it's, it's, it's the same thing. We have our fees. We can change our okay. fees, but okay. Anything else, Brian? I think that's pretty much it. Well, this thing on your housing and community development, have you sent this to the housing committee? Um, maybe. Not, Did I send it to you? No, we're not scared. <laughs> um, I don't think we're eligible. We're, I don't. I don't. I believe we're not eligible for it because we have a a restriction on growth in town. Oh, we do. Yeah, we have a growth limitation by law. For what number of houses being built every year? Oh. And that would right. come they, into they play here, right? Because they're trying to discourage that those types of bylaws. Right. So they're not going to yeah. give a grant to somebody who's going to tell two twenty. Plus, hundred thousand dollars is not going to make the center school happen. Oh, and we got the MVP grant. The which? Right. The yeah. MVP grant. Yeah. Oh. That I forwarded to you guys. Oh yeah. Glad I drove that. Okay. Here's the payoff. Now you got to drive the rest of the way.
I just need I just need Joyce to sign this. Okay. We can do it. it doesn't need to be the meeting. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. I guess.